Hey guys, Gabriel Varga here. Today, by request, I want to take you through the do's and the don'ts of head movement in kickboxing. So you can do this, but not end up like this. The video today, guys, is happening because one of the subscribers to the channel commented, asked for this video. That's why it's happening. If you have your own request, throw it down in the comments below. When we're talking about breaking down head movement, it's very important to remember. You may have seen people like Lordzilla who slip shots. You see guys like Anderson Silva who walk back with their chin up and do all sorts of crazy things. I am talking today about the basics. What should you be doing if you are new, intermediate or advanced, but you're not a kickboxing phenom or somebody who just naturally has crazy good eyesight? There are always ways to break rules. For example, if you see Manny Pacquiao, I'll switch to Southpaw here. If you see Manny Pacquiao punch slow motion when he gets in the combo, he's just going like this. Hands coming back to his hips so low, but because he's popping the shots out so fast, he gets away with it. Would I recommend anybody punch like him when they're learning? Absolutely not. So today is the same thing. I'm gonna show you three ways to slip, three basic slips that are very effective and three things you 100% don't want to do if you're new to the sport or even intermediate but does that mean that some fighters don't get away with it no 100 percent not there are some guys who can just break the rules they can bend the rules they can snap the rules and they get away with it i mean me myself i am not a natural slipper i prefer to just have my hands here and be very safe as opposed to you know slip a shot and then accidentally eat the second shot because i wasn't ready to do a second slip so we're going to break down what you should do and what you probably shouldn't do, but bear in mind there are people who can do these things you shouldn't do. They're just so good at slipping that they can get away with it. Before we get to our three points of do's and our three points of do nots, if you guys haven't, make sure you get subscribed. If you're enjoying the video, give it a like and we'll keep rolling along here. So let's start with the things you absolutely should do, the things that you should drill, the things that you should get very, very good at. And starting with point number one, I wanna to go to the most basic, which is slipping straight punches. So you should absolutely, yes, be slipping straight punches hands are up wherever you have them if you see a straight punch come and you can get your head off the center line or the other way off the center line that is super effective now if you're more advanced as you get your head off the center line you actually throw your own shot and I've talked about that in our back to basics uh, intermediate you can check that out there slipping and throwing your own shot. But this is absolutely something that you should get good at. Your knees bend very slightly you drop your weight over one side and the punch swings by or misses your head. From here, at this point, you're free to either engage closer, close the gap, move away, or throw your own counter shot. Slipping a jab, slipping a cross, this is something that works for boxers. 100%, you have to know how to do it, there's no question. MMA, you really should know how to do it. You don't have to do it in kickboxing, but I would recommend you learn it. Especially if you have somebody who has longer arms than you, you're not always gonna be the person with the longest arms. Somebody throws a punch and you just move your head off that center line. It won't come right away. It takes drilling, it takes time to learn and then to execute, but start implementing it in your shadow boxing, your drilling. It's something that you 100% should know how to do. Now, number two that I wanna talk about which you should know how to do is also slipping hooks. Now, this is very different than slipping hooks for boxing, and we're gonna talk about that when we get to the do nots. But when I slip a hook, when I am rolling under the shot, the most important thing for me to keep in mind is I have, like with me with my spiky hair, it's perfect. When the punch comes, I almost want my hair to make contact with the glove. I don't wanna to go too low, I just keep it short and I just do the minimal amount of effort, the minimal amount of movement required. And because it's kickboxing, it's very important that we always keep our hands tight. We don't wanna slip with our hands down so the hands stay locked to the head. Normally I stay up here, which is why I don't end up blocking too often because slipping down this way with these hands really high just makes your head that much bigger and it becomes that much harder to slip. But if you are somebody who likes your hands down here, it's very easy for you to roll back and forward and get under those hook shots. Slipping straight punches, slipping hooks are both essential to kickboxing, maybe not at the lower level, but as you get higher, even for me, who I'm not a big slipper, I have used it time and time again in fights, and it's just so effective when somebody's coming with a lot of pressure. Punching somebody off their guard, 
feels good. It feels like you're landing, but when somebody starts moving your head and you start missing shots, it's exhausting, it's frustrating, it's demoralizing. It's something that as the aggressor, you just don't wanna see in your opponent. So start learning how to slip the straight punches and slip the hooks. And finally guys, the last thing that you should be doing if you're trying to implement head movement in kickboxing is learning to fade back. Now again, I broke this down in detail in the intermediate back to basics breakdown, but we'll go through it again here. I'll show you some clips of how this can be effectively used and we'll go through just a few of the finer points. And the nice thing about this fade back, a nice thing about tipping your head back is it doesn't matter if it's a round kick, a front kick, that's not something I'd use it, usually use it for, or a spinning hook kick, really any kick at head level, if they're aiming to actually land here and not way back here, you getting your head out of the way is gonna be effective for all those shots. So you don't have to make the distinction as somebody starts kicking at head level between a side kick, a front kick, a round kick, a hook kick. If you can just get your head off the center line, or sorry, back off that stationary spot where your head normally sits, if you can get back off that, you are gonna be out of the way. And then after that, it's just a matter of how you follow up with it and making sure your hands are in the correct position. So as I fade my head back. There's a couple things I'm trying to do here. Number one, I'm trying to make sure my head doesn't go way back past my heels and my hips don't end up impossibly far in front of my head because now once I've done this, it's hard to get back. So for me, I try to keep the whole head protected. My hands start here. My shoulders are fairly square. As I fade back, I turn sideways. I use the front shoulder to protect my head on this side and this hand stays up nice and high. The front arm becomes a counterbalance to get me back up. If I keep both hands up here, for me, it's very difficult with my core and back strength to lift myself back up. It doesn't feel strong enough. So getting that front arm down makes all the difference to being able to chamber back up very quick. Or if I wanted to, I could just hang out here. But as soon as I bring my hands up and I turn back to square, now from here, this is so uncomfortable. So getting that little turn, that little drop, bend through the back knee, that makes all the difference in this fade back for headshots being so effective and working so well, making it very comfortable for you. So for our do's, for head movement in kickboxing, we have get the head off the center line, slip the straight punches, roll under the hook shots, and fade back on any head kick. I could go much more in depth on slipping and rolling and such, but we're sticking right now with beginner, intermediate sort of area, the basics that you should be working if you are wanting to implement proper head movement in kickboxing. Now let's turn this around entirely and go, what should you absolutely not do in kickboxing in regards to head movement? Again, unless you're somebody who's just you know, goes against the grain and you can get away with it. Some people can, some people are exceptional in certain areas and they can break the mold, break the rules. But we're talking about for the average person here, or maybe somebody even my, as myself, I do not break these rules that I'm about to share with you. So first guys, I wanna talk about the punches, the slipping of punches that we've already covered. Number one, I've seen so many people get knocked out with a shot and it ends very badly. Somebody throws a straight punch at you. You slip down to the side. I wanna talk about the mistakes here that a lot of people make. and and remembering in kickboxing that the legs are involved. If it's boxing, I can have my hands here and I can slip way down here. And I'm not worried about any repercussions of something coming upwards. It's just the punches that I'm worried about. But with kickboxing, because somebody can throw the punch, try and get you to fade out that way. And if they're going too low, if I repeatedly see somebody slipping my shot too low, I'll throw this as a fake and then have them come right into my head kick. So very important when you have straight punches coming at your head and you want to slip, you want to stay very tight, very tight to the hand and the outside of the arm. So it's like this, not like this, so that you don't eat that head kick. And that right away brings us to the next point. When we slip, we don't want our hands to drop because now the entire head is open for the round kick. I've seen people do amazing slips and oh, they're here and then bam, they're knocked out with a head kick because their weight is moving directly into that kick as it comes up. Two forces meeting is terrible. So whenever I slip, this is my, this is my rule for myself. Whenever I slip to the outside of a straight punch, I have my hand at temple level. If I slip the other side, still have my hand at temple level. I'm always protected from that idea that somebody's gonna go one and two or one and two. The kick is coming after. That is the big danger on slipping the straight shots. You wanna be aware of that kick coming up. Now, same idea with the hooks. Before I was talking about when you slip or you roll under a hook, you wanna have almost your hair 
get brushed by the punch. If I go really down low and now the shot's way up here, yes, I slipped it a lot more, but in kickboxing, the person comes here and then they drive the knee up. And you have to be very, very aware of dropping too far and then eating a head knee. It has to be small. So after they throw the shot and they come to throw their knee, you're already back up here. And they have to really get their knee high to get to your chin level. And hopefully you see it coming and you can block from there. So very small rolls on your hook shots, trying to have the arm brush over the hair. So important, make sure your chin still stays tucked. You come down and you just get that nice little roll happening. And again, we've talked about this in the Back to Basics. I believe the beginner, I'll link that one up there. You can hopefully find that. All the details on how you should be slipping, but a definite do not on head movement in kickboxing is leave yourself exposed for kicks or knees after you slip a punch. Right, next I wanna talk about fading back on the round kick. And we talked about this already. We just said, yes, absolutely, fade back on the round kick. It works so well. But if you do this wrong, as Rico Verhoeven proved, I mean, this guy is, uh, a crazy glory champion. I don't think he's lost in glory in probably close to 10 years, but he did lose in China. As he saw the round kick go by, he just got a little lazy with his bottom hand, and then the spinning back fist comes around and ka-plunk, you're down. So as we fade back, utilize this technique for sure, but never fade back with two hands low. That's an absolute do not. There are people that can get away with it. One of my opponents, Lord Zilla, he constantly fades back like that. His hands are just dangling down but it's because his head movement is above and beyond almost anybody in the kickboxing Muay Thai world that he can get away with it. Everybody else, as Rico proved, should be slipping and not having this hand down here. This leaves the whole upper head open. It should be right up here when you slip. You come there and now you're safe from somebody coming one, you think you're protected and then they come around spinning elbow or spinning back fist. Whenever you fade back on a head level kick, Remember, you need to protect both sides of the head. One high, one shoulder high, from there we're protected. From here, I can utilize this amazing feedback technique without the repercussions of a follow-up spinning technique or anything else stupid. I've seen guys in heavyweight, I think Botter's even done it before, where he kicks, he gets angry, and he just throws a sloppy spinning back fist. But if your hands are down after you fade it, you're getting clipped, you might be going down. And finally, guys, you will see many, many people who are very good at head movement. They'll start here, they'll be moving around, they'll drop their hands, they'll fade, they'll fade, they'll walk way, way back with their hands down, constantly evading shots. This is fine if you're a very high level person, but dropping both hands and keeping your chin high is just asking to get KO'd. Anderson Silver showed us this back in one of his UFC losses against Chris Weidman. He was granted just being very cocky. If he would have not been cocky, it probably wouldn't have happened. I do understand that, but still it's a prime example. If you want to drop your hands, which I don't recommend in the first place, if you're gonna be doing any slipping at all, chin tucked. You don't want your chin up here because now instead of getting hit in the forehead, you're getting caught in the jaw. That is a knockout point. So much easier to get knocked out, get your head rattled on the jaw area as opposed to the forehead. So whenever I'm slipping, whenever I'm backing up, even if my hands went from here down to here and I'm working lots of movement, my chin is tucked. That is an absolute must in kickboxing. You Never ever want to have your chin high in this sport. So do not for slipping is having your hands low, your chin high and walking backwards, waiting for this punch to land. I know you're not actually waiting, but it's gonna be coming at some point. Some people get away with it. You know, do some sparring rounds, they'll get away with it, they'll get away with it, we'll get away with it, and then one day you get clipped, and right away you're going, oh, that was a mistake. Don't let it happen to you, you can be moving around, you can have your hands here, somebody starts to throw you, just like, uh-huh, like that, punched, down on the ground, all done, it should be, I'm here, I'm moving around, I fade back, my chin stays down if my hands drop. It's an automatic must of head movement in kickboxing. All right, guys, as I said, I could go into so much depth on this whole subject. We're talking probably a 10 minute video here. This could be stretched out to a half an hour, an hour, a whole class on it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this small, concise version. Just keep in mind that it's not everything on the topic. If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a like, get subscribed, do me a big favor, share the 
the video if you think other people are going to enjoy it are going to learn from it guys i've been sharing a lot of technique videos lately other fighters technique breaking them down talking about fight stories i haven't got to as many training videos workout videos as i would like but keep in mind there are still many of them up there try them out do them a second time as i always say guys train hard and i'll see you back here soon for another video